Well, welcome to Takeaway, a weekly conversation with the ministry team here at Silverdale, where we talk about our pastor's weekend sermon. And I'm so excited that Clayton, you're back again. Yes, back again. <laughs> and you have no idea what that means because we've actually tried this a couple of times yeah, yeah. and keep having mistakes. But but Clayton, thanks, man, for, for being back and do this. If you don't know Clayton, he uh, works with our college ministry, leads our college ministry, also works in our small group ministry. Mm -hmm. And man, I'm just grateful for all that you do. Thank you so much. Couldn't be, couldn't be happy to be here. <laughs> so we're talking about Psalm 42 today. Uh, Tony preached on it this past weekend, uh, and Travis as well, for those of you that heard Travis. And uh, Tony titled the sermon, A Song of Despair. And Clayton, early on in the, uh, in the sermon, he said this. He said, there is a myth among Christians that if you really love Jesus and are pursuing Jesus, you will never go through a season where you are depressed or discouraged. Mm. Total myth. Fabrication. Yeah. What do you think about that? Man, thank goodness that it's a myth, right? Right. Because if it was actually true, how much worse would my life be? Mm. Um, but yeah, like what, a, what, a, what an opportunity for our pastors to teach us uh, the truth that no matter what season or what, no matter what circumstance may be current in our life, that God is still good and that uh -huh. we still have a reason to worship. We still have a song, even in despair, to sing to God. And yeah, I love his take on on this series. It's called Mixtape. Um, and he said yesterday, he said, God's, he called it God's greatest hit for the people of God. God's greatest hits for the people of God. This whole idea, are, are you a playlist guy? For Mega. Are you? Yeah. Couldn't be a bigger one. <laughs> like all kinds of playlists for all kinds of things or just like- Yeah, yeah. I'm making probably a couple of playlists a week. No like, kidding. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So this really resonates with you, this whole idea. I'm not going to lie. Mixtape was probably a little bit of a generation above me. <laughs> uh, I never had to Speak like- Speak in my language. I made a few. You yeah, may have also. It was like a tape thing, right? To yep. record. Yeah. So I just add- Yeah, but retro is kind of in. Retro is it's vintage. Yeah, there you go. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm into that like very much so. Yeah, it is. It's a it's a really creative idea, and and what we're learning from Psalm forty two, uh, and what Tony's been teaching is that God does provide a, a remedy um, to get through what he called singing the blues. You yeah. know, when we go through those times of despair, and as you were telling me earlier off camera, you know, Psalm forty two is really one of you. I didn't know this before I asked you to do this, but it really is one of your favorite songs. Yeah, it is. Psalm forty two is is a top. Uh, an HOA, it's a hall of fame for me in the Psalms, uh, as it goes, cause it, it just has impacted my life so much. And so, um, when I think about Psalm 42, I think about, you know, what we'll get into about speaking to yourself, but what I love about what pastor started in his sermon yesterday was the second point about isolation mm. and that in despair, despair and isolation uh, can be, you know, two sides of the same coin or certainly cousins, right? Like they yeah. usually go accompany one another. And, uh, you know, I, he, we just finished the, the To Gather series where he talked right. about the importance of church. And even yesterday or, or Sunday this past weekend, uh, he said, you know, you can worship Jesus alone in the forest, but the tree isn't coming. The trees aren't coming to visit you. Yeah. What a creative hospital. statement. So good, right? Like, yeah. And that's, that's part of it, right? At the VIA, at our college ministry, we say every week we experience God best in community. And it's something um, in small groups we talk about that there's, this is a big deal about, about being together, being part of, you know, worship. A uh, pastor says that something unique happens, right? When we gather together to worship, but something unique happens when we gather in small groups and, and, yeah. and that stuff. And so isolation is a tool of Satan community is a tool of God. Yeah. And Tony, you talk, Hey, Tony, you, you, if you're watching this, Tony, <laughs> Tony talked about this, uh, yesterday that it is one of his tactics. Um, and, and you've experienced that as yes. you shared with me, I've experienced that. I imagine many of you watching or listening to this have experienced that, that one of Satan's greatest attacks is either to isolate us or cause us to think we want to be isolated. Exactly right. Exactly right. Yeah. yeah. I can think in my life, like, and because the second part of what you just said, right. I may not even, I may not, I may be around other people, but the lie is that I, 
I should be by myself or these people aren't familiar with what's going on or they could never relate or if they really knew what was going on, then they wouldn't want me with them, which is just another form of isolation. Yeah. Yeah. And the lie is the lie is there. I mean, and, and it comes in different forms. I mean, certainly we talked about how Satan lies to us. Mm. And he, you know, we as Baptists don't spend a lot of time talking about the spiritual, but it is a reality. Sure. But along with that, our own self, we can lie to ourselves, our own insecurities. I know I struggle with my own version of insecurities mm. and, and, and we all do. And so one of those is, ah, man, I just, maybe it's, I don't know, I don't have time or I don't really want to have time. Or I'm too busy, sure. which is another way of saying, I guess I don't have time. Right. I mean, I don't know. You, you spend a lot of time in small groups. Yeah. Like it's a, it's a big deal. Right. And, and you know, we've talked before too, about like, we're not oblivious to how hard it can be to find community sometimes uh -huh. too. And so that's kind of one version or one part, one piece of the puzzle that doesn't get mentioned. Yeah. We talk about how great small groups are. We talk about how necessary they are and they are, and they're great. Uh, but we can sometimes like just gloss over like, like people are messy and people are difficult uh -huh. and like other people's kids are like, you know, banshees and like yeah. <laughs> other people's houses are, you know, smell weird because they have three cats and like, I don't like cats and like all this stuff. Right. But we continue to fight to find our spot in small group because yeah. it's still valuable. And yeah. we do small group in spite of life circumstances. We do small groups in spite of people's awkwardnesses. And, yeah. you know, life happens best in community. Yes, absolutely. Um, and, and, and that is one of the, um, I guess one of the answers to despair. Right. Um, it's proven true in my life. Uh, I know coming to Silverdale, I've shared this several times in coming to Silverdale, there was that initial, and I came as a staff mm -hmm. pastor here at Silverdale. I can imagine it's only that much harder when you come in as, you know, a member or a prospective member considering Silverdale as a church, but I came in with no community yeah. and, and having to build community like everybody else does. And that takes time and it takes effort and you try and it might work out this time. And you visit a small group and you're like, ah, that's yeah. great people, not a good fit. And right. you just go find another. Yeah. My, one of my favorite things about, uh, I can't remember who said it, but, uh, about community is like, we don't find community, community, we build it. Okay. And so, that's good. uh, you know, we often think that like, we're going to walk into somebody's front door or somebody's classroom or whatever and be like, this is it. And it clicks. And by the grace of God, sometimes that happens. But more often than not, we're digging our shovels. Like we're laying the bricks, like yeah. we're building. It's work. Place. Yeah, it and it's is. good work. It's it good is. work. You know, in the psalmist here, um, as, as, as I'm looking at Psalm 42, one of his longings was to be back with community. Mm. Um, he felt isolated from that. And, and as he struggled with his personal battles, he found it helpful to remind himself by asking a question, why are you so troubled or why are you so in, in such despair? Uh, and Tony talked about just the importance of speaking truth into our own life. Yeah. In fact, there's a quote that our pastor used. This is it. This is the quote. This is the quote. This is the quote. This is a, a Martin Lloyd-Jones quote. Uh, and, and I don't know if this is true or not, but I think, and I have to ask Tony this, uh, I think this may be Tony's longest quote ever. Yeah, yeah. Cause if you were watching the sermon, it's just like screen after screen, <laughs> after screen, after screen, but it was so good. It the was best. so good. I had to go back and watch it, uh, pausing along the way to write it down, but it really is good. Martin Lloyd Jones is a, was a great British pastor. I tell you, I wish, wish Maddie were here. Like, Listen, wrong, wrong guy. You got the wrong guy. I don't know what to say. Maybe we'll do like, I don't know, a short video of Maddie reading this. Um, <laughs> but it said, I'll read it in full. It says, have you realized that most of your unhappiness in life is due to the fact that you are listening to yourself instead of talking to yourself? Take those thoughts that come to you the moment you wake up in the morning. You have not originated them, but they are talking to you. They bring back the problems of yesterday. Who is talking to you? Yourself is talking to you. Now the psalmist insisted, I'm sorry. Now the psalmist, instead of allowing self to talk to him, he starts talking to himself. Mm. His soul had been depressing him. So he stands up and says, self, listen for one moment. I will speak to you. Mm. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, the best, right? Like I think uh, this is something, this is a truth that has shaped so much of my life has shaped been so instrumental in, in, in my growth of, in my spiritual walk. And, and, um, you know, even, you know, if you want to talk like mental health, if you want to talk about that side of things, like, I think, uh, you know, one of the things that I like, 
I would think about is um, Tim Keller, the pastor from New York, says that the world says that um, the problems are outside of us and the solution is inside of us. And Christianity says that the problem is inside of us and the solution is outside of mm. us, ultimately finding oh, Christ. Helpful. And so if I can think about that for a second, the Bible says, right, the heart is defe- deceitful above all things. Uh-huh. Then, you know, the thoughts that well up from the spring of my heart probably aren't going to be the best thoughts mm. to listen to. And so I get to, I get to tell myself, right. I get to pick the billboards that I get to, to pay attention to in my life. And so by, as Dr. Lloyd Jones says, and, and the psalmist shows us by saying, okay, this is the trial and this is the truth. This is the lie I used to believe. This is what the Bible says about me. This is what the Bible says about God. This is what the Bible says about my circumstances. Uh-huh. I get to reorient my perspective that even though my circumstances may not change, I teach myself, I preach myself, I remind myself that God is still good and that God still has a plan for me and a hope and a future. And so um, it is one of the things that I think can change our life so drastically. That's really such a, a simple, um, you know, task. Man, Clayton, you just, you said so many things there. Like we could, we can spend a, a podcast or a video just unpacking <laughs> that statement. That was so good. Thank you. Wow. Uh, the self-talk is is helpful it defeats the lie that that lie that will it'll come back for sure it'll definitely come back and you'll have to deal with this again the psalmist and you talked about that it just that that circle uh just a moment ago and the psalmist dealt with this twice in this psalm and and he wrote the next one as well i think it was originally one long psalm that was broken for the purpose of the bible but that's that's a different topic (laughs) (laughs) that's a different podcast um But he says it three times. He asks himself, why are you in despair, oh my soul? Uh, Why are you cast down, oh my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? He's he's doing the very thing that that Lloyd-Jones talks about in his quote and and what you're talking about, of speaking truth back into that. So, so important. One of the things that Tony said towards the end is um, how helpful it is to declare truth, but to do so in a song. Because these were originally yeah. songs. And so I was wondering if you might sing a little bit of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Grab the van. Little yeah. bring, bring them in. <laughs> oh, man. But, you know, in all, in all, <laughs> in all, in all honesty, in all, I guess, truthfulness, um, I'll, I'll re- reword all that in this. But <laughs> in all fairness, that's a better yeah, way of yeah. saying it um, to you. As a leader in, um, in, in the college ministry, um, I, I can only imagine that music mm. is so helpful mm. as it is in every age, yeah. but music is helpful in helping students at that age Absolutely. work through whatever. Yeah. It's something that we spend, um, a lot of time thinking about and how to, what songs are we singing and, and what are they teaching us? Right. Like, cause, uh, fortunately we have a pastor who teaches in such a way that makes it a lot easier to remember things. But yes. sometimes it can still be hard to remember stuff from a sermon. We usually find ourselves singing some verse of the song that we sang the past Sunday. And so those things stick with us in a way that is unique, right? Like it just is. And, you know, I'm sure for you and even for me, right, there's these, just like a song for every season, right? Like, just like you mentioned, like there are these songs that maybe aren't very popular or didn't experience commercial success, but like they were a song that you listened to in a season of life that, it means so much, that song is so much more important to you than probably anyone else on earth, right? But, yeah. And yeah. it changes your, you know, it changes you because it. Yeah, I think for me, it's it's some of the the rich old hymns, mm. um, you know, and, and each weekend we have sung a different hymn. And yeah. this weekend we sang It Is Well With oh. My Soul, which uh, is so powerful. And so for me, um, when I sing that song, it brings me back to a very specific memory and it reminds me of God's goodness, mm. you know, as, as that song talks about, oh, those Satan should buffet and, and, you know, it talks about all the trials and all that. Uh, and through all that, it can be well with our soul. Mm. And, and it just, it's a, it's a moment of cleansing yeah, that's good. for me, um, of whatever may be hurting me, just in kind of the internal, just taking the, the, the tension and just finding release. Yeah, that's good. And that, that's so, yeah, good. music is helpful. Yeah. Clayton, man, I have enjoyed this today. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Always. Thank you for having me.
And I hope this has been helpful for you. Want to let you know of another project that, that I'm a part of. It's called Pre-Service, where I another guy and I sit in a chair similar to this, looks a little different, but similar to this, where we talk about instead of what the pastor just preached, we talked about what our pastors are going to preach. And so we're not pre-preaching the sermon. We're talking about some of the historical um, historical context, maybe some of the language, some of the characters, trying to maybe take some of the edge off of the scripture. You know, some people learn well through devotions and preparing for, for worship. Uh, and, and others, if this is a help, we would encourage you to check that out. But either way, we want to encourage you to spend some time with the Lord this week, thinking about our, 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 our message from this past weekend and then preparing for worship next week.